so we move to our last but not least uh, presenter, <laughs> uh, Professor Ashida Yuzo from IE Business School. She's a leading scholar in social entrepreneurship. And uh, Rashida told me that she has a kind of provocative uh, uh, presentation. So I'm really look forward, and I think that all of us are really look forward to listen to this uh, uh, presentation. Thank you, Rashida. Thank you. So I'm not sure uh, whether you're able to see very well my presentation. Is it on a slideshow or no? No? Now it is. Do you see it? Ah, you don't hear me now. Do you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, okay. You can see the presentation. Thank you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Okay, so um, yeah, um, uh, thank you for, for having me and thank you for uh, this invitation. Um, I actually decided to, uh, all of these presentations are, are, are really provocative. So, so this, is, uh, this is something that uh, I'm, I'm happy to, 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 to jump on board also with, with my presentation, but mine will be a little bit different in the sense that um, uh, it would be a little bit more personal uh, and I will try really to um, uh, to talk about how I feel as as an academic uh, that teaches and does research on social entrepreneurship. So um, I'm moving. On, I have several screens, so I'm not sure exactly. So you're seeing my screen, right? Everything is good. Yeah. So um, yes. And and. And the other reason also is that um, I knew that by the time I would uh, start talking after the presentation of, of Sylvia and Joel, you would have a, received a lot of wisdom uh, on the research part. So I decided that to, to bring something a little bit uh, complementary or different. Um, as you know, we're, we're, this week is, is, is the World Economic Forum. And what is interesting is that uh, there is, um, the first day uh, of this World Economic uh, Forum, uh, the future of the social economy was with a debate. And actually, they, they, they launched a, a report that will serve as a starting point to, uh, according to them, to reduce common barriers, to prevent um, uh, the, the advancement of, of the social economy. And also, of course, they talk about social entrepreneurship a lot. So this allows a little bit to contextualize the legitimacy of social entrepreneurship uh, uh, in practice, but also I, I think it mirrors a lot of the, the evolution of research and, and academia and social entrepreneurship. Um, we moved from being uh, those of us who started working on this field uh, several decades ago, we moved from, from going from, from the margins really to becoming very mainstream, which is something that probably we should, we should celebrate a lot. Uh, but I'm, uh, the, the more the more I uh, the, our field becomes mainstream, and that's why I'm putting this this slide here. The more people celebrate uh, social entrepreneurship, uh, that will change the world, and us as academic will help our students become the next social entrepreneurs and help them through our research think about how to do that. The more I started wrestling with with some, I would say, uncomfortable and uh, questions, which is whether we're really, really uh, living up to that promise, right? And whether really everything is as rosy as, 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 as it seems. Um, and that makes me think uh, again, uh, back a little bit at our role as academic and, and why it's important in this very uh, uh, multi, multiple uh, ecosystem of social entrepreneurship. So you have, of course, the government and, and, and um, uh, Sylvia was talking about the importance of regulation. You have uh, uh, then you have civil society, and here civil society includes organizations like B Lab and, and Ashoka and, and and all these organizations that are here to support and whose agenda is really to support and to praise uh, the, the the job and the work of social entrepreneurs. You have social entrepreneurs and businesses themselves. But is what is really our role here as as academic? Is it just to show people? Uh, how to be a good social entrepreneur or, or how to do more research to show how work, how well it work, it's working or is it a little bit more? And, and I think that precisely because uh, social entrepreneurship is becoming more established, our role is not just to observe 
things uh, from our tower, but really to to push things, to push people to really uh, critical think, right? And and I was recently uh, reading a book from uh, a prize a Pulitzer Prize winner, um, Philip Roth, and and right, remind us of our role, critical thinking. So given that social entrepreneurship is becoming so mainstream, maybe what we need to do is is really think about what are the key assumptions that we have uh in 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 the praxis and also in sometimes in the teaching on of social entrepreneurship and how we should step a little bit back and, and play a little bit the subversive ones here at this stage now and and try to make think about the key assumptions that were 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 having in in, in this field um and and there's a very simple way of of doing so which is when when I start teaching social entrepreneurship to my students and we try to think about what defines a social enterprise, these are the things that come to people's mind and, and that they find even when they look at, at studies of that, right? So of course you have an organization that has a, a, the prime, primarily a social mission, uh, but very quickly and probably also because I'm, 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 I'm teaching to business scholars uh, most of the time, they will talk about the importance of them being innovative, uh, almost as a mandate, the fact that they have to rely in some way or another to market-based revenue model. And this ties back to some of the questions that uh, Frederica Mata was, was asking previously. Um, and of course, it has to be scalable. It has to measure its impact, right? Uh, all of this, when achieved, will we'll also, we'll, and I'm citing a few studies here that, 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 that talk about this definition, uh, make of our social entrepreneurs the heroes that many uh, depict uh, as, as really like the archetype of a social entrepreneur, right? Now, um, as I said, uh, our role is really to, to take a step back and see whether this is really the case or whether this should be the case. And, and luckily, a lot of uh, research is, is doing exactly that, but I chose to talk about it here because my feeling is that this is not for me practice enough. Uh, we're, we're probably, maybe we're not doing enough research on it, maybe we're not uh, uh, publicizing it or, or getting out, doing enough outreach to make us, make people think about when this works, when it doesn't work, and when it might be actually a negative thing. So. So in that sense, uh, I wanted to try, try really very quickly to go through some of these assumptions and what is being done and what should be uh, done more in that sense. Uh, one of the things that are helping me uh, cope with this is um, uh, researches by, by scholars like uh, Joanna Mayer and Christian Silas, and, and I'm just putting one book that, 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 that I used in class at least to push back some students about this importance of, of innovation. And, and basically, this, the, the idea that they're presenting here is that, of course, we tend to have a novelly optimistic view on, on, on the potential of innovation in the space of social entrepreneurship. Uh, we know that the more, the better, most of the times in, in, in the regular business. But the question is, is it always the case in social enterprise? And I think that uh, these questions, as, as well as the need to, to study the cost of failure and innovation and social impact uh, and space and, and the uh, dominance of this technical view of innovation is probably something that we need to go uh, and do more of in, in terms of research to, to, to inform practice. Um, the same happens with respect to scaling. Uh, what does it mean if a social enterprise doesn't scale? And, and, and more importantly, what are the implications of uh, most practitioners and, and out there, uh, almost business plan competitions, most business uh, impact investors, and, and these supports uh, uh, stakeholder for social enterprise going for uh, acknowledging or celebrating mostly those that scale and, and, and not those that might be efficient, might be very innovative, but not scaling. And what, what would be the implications of that in terms of how people, how the future social entrepreneurs will tweak their, their models? Um, and, and we have, again, some recent articles that are going into, that are calling our attention to that. Uh, the idea of market-based revenue model, uh, I, I, was, I was glad to hear 
uh, um, Federica talk about that and, and for profits versus not for profit. But again, I think this conversation is not prominent enough in the in the practitioner space, at least not in the world of, of business schools. I, I literally this week wrote, uh, read a very interesting and, and controversial uh, uh, post by uh, an IMT professor called Michael Yazizi, where he was basically talking about sustainability, but it applies also to our case, where he was saying that we tend to really uh, focus very much on this zone B, where we talk about the win-wins between profit and non-profit and profit making and, and social impact, when in reality we're caught in the land of hard choices and we don't talk and do enough research about these hard choices. And by focusing too much on the win-wins, we might actually uh, be uh, uh, losing out on, on identifying the things that we should fix in order to to really uh, implement big, uh, big and impactful change thanks to social entrepreneurship and, and sustainable organizations. And one of my, uh, the papers that I use also in, in, in class for that is also this uh, cautionary tale by um, Gracia Mendoza, where they show the uh, uh, U-shaped relationship between actually engaging in earned income strategies and, and survival for nonprofits. So um, yeah, uh, quickly, really uh, for for this overview i um and then also other things related and i'll go very quickly on that uh, to uh competitive competitive dynamics and what that means if you're a for-profit organization what does that mean for the way we think about competitive dynamics and how does this play out in social enterprises and i i love the case of, of one laptop per child where the founder uh, started collaborating uh, with with uh, uh, Linux and Microsoft only to be um, actually sidestepped by them and and then uh, filling especially Microsoft filling the market with cheap low cost small laptops and him uh, actually starting to 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 to, to criticize that in the media and people say aren't we talking about the more the merrier shouldn't social entrepreneurs be happy about it? Well, yes, it's nice, but if we're really going down the road of a for-profit model of social entrepreneurs, we're talking about serious moral and 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 survival dilemma that that we're not doing enough research about and we're not talking uh, enough about. Um, impact measurement, kind of also the same story here. One of my my favorite scholars. Uh, is of course Anwar Ibrahim, and and I will just put this uh, quote that he he uses in the first chapter of his book on impact measurement, where he's basically telling us that uh, actually uh, measuring impact and 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 holding social organizations accountable for their impact that is is less obvious than we think, and that uh, probably there are different ways of accountability and different ways in which we can make social enterprises or, or social organizations more efficient. And maybe they should focus on that rather than just on, on, on bringing the proof of concepts of, of, of what they're doing. Uh, which also, again, goes a little bit against our, our uh, what we're, we're, the message that we're sending out, out there about the importance of measuring impact and how it's a defining element of a successful and a good social enterprise. Uh, and I see in research a lot of uh, the researchers struggling to how to measure impact, especially if we want to compare successful and successful social enterprises. And I think it mirrors a little bit what's what, what's uh, the philosophy here that we're talking about. And and also um, some other interesting things that are being done in that space. Very recent too, which is uh, for example this paper from AD, I mean AMD, where uh, where what they're finding is that. Actually, not only organ social organizations have different ways to measure their impact, but these decisions to, to, to impact, to measure impact, uh, emerge in the absence of a lot of factors that were assumed to be central, including, for example, a topic that has been discussed a lot here, which is certification, right? Or uh, the, the pressure from investors. So, so a lot of things here need to be understood better uh, that for now, are not uh, taking into account in many of the teachings that is and, and, and the mantra that we're trying to, to, 
to, to present to, to practice and to our body and social entrepreneurs. Um, and finally, uh, really, I want to close with, with this idea of heroic approach to, to social entrepreneurship. We had exactly the same thing when we started with entrepreneurship. Seems that we're falling in exactly the same trap. And, and some of our research is also kind of reflecting a little bit that although a lot of researchers also are, are doing great work and, and today um, through, um, through the two presentations that, that preceded me, we can see how really there is this overview on, on social impact that goes beyond the individual approach. But again, I think that much more work is, is necessary there, uh, especially around topics like uh, system thinking and what does that mean for, for social entrepreneurship and social uh, impact. Uh, the role of govern governance, of course, uh, the governance at the systemic level and also the role of regulation and government that was mentioned by, by Sylvia. Um, and then this part, I think, is, is also very exciting too, which also is related to the, to the image that we're feeding uh, some of us and, and are feeding the, the press and, and, and also our students, which is, you know, uh, find your purpose and, and be happy about pursuing your dream through social entrepreneurship where everything fits nicely together. Uh, the reality, of course, is a little bit more complex and, and uh, there might be more things to learn from the billions that are behind social entrepreneurs. So we have some interesting papers about you know, uh, entitling and how emotional attachment to social entrepreneurship can lead uh, to actually very bad results or counter, counter uh, productive results, or or even at the individual level, how this apparently is not necessarily good for well-being and, and social entrepreneurs being more uh, uh, at risk of feeling burnout or, 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 or reacting negatively to situations like failure. So um, yeah, uh, I think that I'm, I'm just one minute from, from the end of my presentation. So I'll just throw uh, one last idea here. Uh, there are some interesting new research that is trying to be done about whether social enterprise is necessarily ethical. Of course, you, you probably have, have uh, agree with me that this is not always the case. Uh, but again, I think that it's much more research should be done on that. And, and, and there are some exciting already papers that are starting on that. And also the potential negative externalities that might be behind some social enterprise that are springing out there. And, and, and if you're interested in knowing more, I, I, I based it on uh, images here, but I'm happy to, to give more information about that. And with that, um, yeah, I think I will stop here, although I think I, I have uh, more, more things to share here especially with respect to the uh, global, uh, broader implication of social entrepreneurship. And, and I think uh, this has been already in a way implicitly mentioned when we talk about institutions. What is the role of, of social entrepreneurship in, in, 